welcome back to another video and today I have an epic Zodiac Outlook deck profile for you guys. This is my take on the deck. I think it is still very, very competitive and without further ado, be sure to smash the like button, comment down below what you guys think of my take on the deck and of course subscribe to the channel because that would be really, really cool and of course ring the notification bell so you guys are notified every single time I upload a video and without further ado, let's get right into the video. So once again, Zodiac Outlook is <clears throat> a really powerful deck. It, it, I think Outlook is one of the top contenders of this current format. And Zodiac Outlook is a very, very powerful take on the Outlook variant. And yeah, so let's get right into it. Double um, Outlook the Golden Lord. I think um, Golden Lord is a really, really good card. That at three, it's way too bricky, and you obviously need more than one because of Sanguine and stuff like that. It's a really, really good card, and it does combo really, really well. And I think that too is the perfect ratio. On to our mini Zodiac package, we have Triple Zodiac Ram Ram, the one Thoroughblade, and the one Whiptail. Ram Ram is by far the best one because it gives you another form of interaction in the form of like a trap negate. And then obviously Thoroughblade is really good for like loading your graveyard and obviously just drawing your cards. And finally Whiptail is very very good too because sometimes you just want the extra 12 attack boost and it's nice to have it as a material that you can just attach from your hand. And on top of that, a lot of people forget that the Zodiac monster that you summon with it, it gets the effect that it's basically a construct but better because it can just banish whatever it battles, which is really 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 good. It's a very small main deck like package other than hand traps, but I do think these are the perfect ratios if you are going to be playing Zodiac Outlook. Any more than this I find is just way too bricky and clogs up your hand too much, so I do think that this is the perfect amount of Zodiacs and Outlook monsters. We have, um, obviously, Triple Ash Blossom Joy Spring, Triple Valor, Triple Nibiru. Obviously, as I like to say, Season to Taste, your hand traps are completely up to you. It, it's whatever you prefer for hand traps. I think that Ash and Nibiru are really, really good this format. Valor is a good option. You can run instead of this a lot of other cards. I just think Valor is pretty good. Um, both of these cards I do think are mandatory in this format, especially Nibiru with Dragon Link on the rise. I do think that these two um, cards are really, really good. By the way, check out my Dragon Link deck profile. Um, yeah, back to the video, I guess. Um, these are my three hand traps of choice. You guys can also run Imperm. I do prefer having the actual physical monster though. I don't know, I think it, Valor in my opinion is just a bit better. Imperm is pretty good too though, so by no means you should forget about that. Um, definitely though, 3 Ash, 3 Valor, 3 Nibiru, I, I really like this hand trap lineup, but I wouldn't change it if I was me, which I am. Triple on Chris Alvin onto the spells. Outland is really, really, really good. It, there's a reason why it got it like bought out and a lot more expensive. This card literally starts all of your combos, and by searching your Golden Lord or whatever spell and trap you need for that certain scenario, it's just really, really broken. Not to mention the second effect of when it's sent to Griever, just the send one. It just the recursion in this deck and the overall resources in the grind game is just absolutely insane. Outland is one of the key reasons for that. I do think Outland is absolutely amazing. Definitely mandatory, mandatory. If you're having any Outland build. No matter, like, even whatever, um, it doesn't matter what type of variant it is, just triple album is mandatory. The one Zodiac Barrage, this card is at 1, I wish it was at 3, because that would be a lot better, but obviously Barrage is really, really stupid, I don't think I need to explain this, um, this too much, just pop it off and go off. Uh, triple tanky because once again this is a Zodiac Outlook version, so we are running a bunch of Beast Wars. If you open tanky then you basically have access to Dryden and like Zeus if you're going second, which is really really cool. Um, tanky is a broken card I think in general. Um, triple Pot of Prosperity. Prosperity is one of the most busted cards I think in the whole like like main deck. You can run Extravagance, you definitely can run Extravagance, but I do think Prosperity is significantly better than Extravagance. Um, yeah, onto the traps, you have Triple Sanguine. Sanguine should be limited, I believe, in the next ban list. I do think this is a hit that Konami missed. Um, good ban list, but still, this should have gone to 1. This is a really, really busted card, and as long as this card is at 3, Outlook will be good. Um, you have Triple Conquistador. Conquistador obviously being the most, like, it's the better, con like, trap card over Hakuro. Hakuro is the other one, which banishes. They are both good in their scenario. You have to evaluate the situation and decide which one you want to go for. I really, really like Conquistador, though. We have Triple Summon Limit. This is a bit of a spicy tech. Summon Limit is one of the most insane cards in this format because it kills a lot of decks. And Summon Limit, I feel like, is being overlooked right now and definitely does deserve a spot in the deck. I do think a lot more people should be running this card. And it is very, very spicy, very, very strong. And sometimes you can just completely end your opponent's turn, especially if they're already summitized and then you flip it. It's just really, really nice. And the one Imperial Order, all of your spells, if you haven't realized. So, Eldon, it searches you, and then you're done with it, um, because you're going to send it to Grave. Uh, Barrage, it pops itself. Um, Tenki, it searches, and then it does nothing other than boost. 
and like prosperity, yeah, use it goes to bit. Um, all of these cards are like turn one cards too, which you can use later. But yeah, Imperial Order is absolutely insane in this deck, and I do think it does deserve a spot. Like a lot of people are overlooking this, and you don't realize how good Imperial Order really can be in the right deck. And I think this is the perfect deck for it. And finally, we have the one Skill Drain. Skill Drain, same thing. Like, the, you're not relying on your monsters to really do the big damage and stuff. Well, damage, yes, but to do the big, like, disruptions. You're relying on your traps and, like, I guess, Dryden, kind of. Skull Drain is just a really, really good card in that sense because it doesn't hurt you and you still can combo because also Outlook is engraven in hand, so it doesn't affect it. Skull Drain is just really, really, really good in this deck. The only thing it does hit is your Zodiac monsters in the extra, but if you're active in Skull Drain, then you're already done for the Zodiac combo. On to the next deck, we have Double Divine Arsenal Zeus. Having the one is really nice, but the second one is absolutely amazing for the grand game. The one Vespinado, um, Vespinado is really, really, really good. You make it over the Dryden. Sometimes it's it's just a really, really great card. I do quite like this card. Double Borbo. Borbo is absolutely insane. Um, I do remember back in Zoo format, my friend, he did achieve the 12 material requirement. It was pretty funny. Super low payout, though. He only ended up popping like one or two cards. But, like, yeah, it was so funny. Triple M, Chaka 9. Chaka 9 is obviously stupid. It's probably one of the best um, Zodiac monsters. And then the one Dryden. Dryden is obviously absolutely insane. Dryden is just really, really good. If Borbo comes back, then this deck becomes exponentially better, but it's already really, really good. Double Hammer Kong. I really do like Hammer Kong, and I don't like running it at less than two. I feel like all the Zodiac monsters, if you're running them, you need to at least have two. And finally, double Tiger Mortar. Tiger Mortar, obviously, for your um, Chaka 9, Tiger, uh, Tiger Mortar, and Hammer Kong combo to make the one and only Klops. The Klops is a really, really powerful card, which a lot of decks can't out because Xyz monsters, they aren't seeing that much play other than in this deck. And even so, like, this card is just insane, and so many decks just won't be able to out it. And it's 4,000 attack, and you have a really consistent combo to get to it. And I feel like if you can end this card most of the time, the game will be over, especially if you back it up with all of your trap cards. On to our final extra deck card, we have the One Nightmare Phoenix. Phoenix is just really good, it's a generic card. You can swap this out for basically any other card in the game, though, because it is, like, other than Zeus and Phoenix, the second Zeus, which I personally like. Like, yeah, it's a loose extra deck, you can choose to earn whatever you want. And that's basically it for the main and side deck, or main and extra deck on the side. We have the one alpha because it is searchable, obviously. Or is it? Oh, no, it is not. It's not searchable, but still alpha is really, really good. Triple Agadarla, obviously, to out the barrier statue, lightning storm, cosmic, um, dark ruler, um, harpies, and finally red reboot for the trap matchup. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Be sure to smash like and comment down below what you guys think of my deck. And of course, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Alright, guys, peace.